Hi there. You know, it's not always easy to tell if someone is truly sorry. And the Apostle Paul tells us that there are two kinds of sorry. There's a worldly kind of sorry that leads to death and a godly sorry or sorrow that leads to repentance in 2 Corinthians 7. So when you've been repeatedly wounded in a relationship, it's crucial that you learn to distinguish between the two because a worldly sorry is self-focused. It may contain great emotion of tears and apologies, but the grief expressed is primarily for one's own self. The person grieves and is sorrowful over the consequences of his or her sin, what's lost. This may be a marriage, a job, a reputation, friends or family. It can even be one's own idea of who he thought he was. Here are some of the things we often hear a person say when they're involved in this kind of grief. I can't believe I did such a thing. Why is this happening to me? Please forgive me, implying, please don't make me suffer the consequences of my sin. Why won't you forgive me? In other words, why can't you just let go of the consequences and reconcile with me? I'm so sad. I'm a horrible person. I hate myself. I wish I were dead. Now, a good example of this kind of sorrowing is Judas. After he betrayed Christ in Matthew 27, it says he was seized with an emotion called remorse, yet it did not lead to a godly repentance, but rather to self-hatred and even suicide. And it's natural that we're drawn to feel compassionate for a person suffering such emotional and spiritual pain. However, it's crucial that you not confuse this kind of sorrow with the kind of sorrow that actually leads someone to true biblical repentance. Because godly sorrow demonstrates grief over one's sinfulness toward God as well as the pain it's caused the other person. John the Baptist says it best when he told the religious leaders, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And so I wanna give you eight things that I have found demonstrate those fruits of genuine repentance, genuine sorrow. And the first is someone accepts full responsibility for their sinful actions and attitudes. They don't blame other people or other situations. Second, they acknowledge their own sinfulness instead of, I can't believe I could do such a thing. Oh my gosh, I did such a thing. Three, they recognize the effect of those sinful actions on others and show empathy for the pain they've caused you. Fourth, they're able to identify what they've done in detail, such as their abusive tactics or attitudes of entitlement or areas of chronic deceit. They don't just say, I'm sorry, I might have hurt you. Five, they're willing to accept the consequences of their sin without demands or conditions. I'll go to counseling if you move back home is not accepting the consequence of what one has done. Six, they're willing to make effort and make amends for the damages. The Bible's full of scriptural passages that talk about amends making, and this is an important part of rebuilding trust. And seven, they're willing to make consistent changes over the long term, such as learning new behaviors and attitudes, characteristic of healthy relationships. And last, they're willing to be accountable, and if needed long term, to others in community who know the truth about what's going on. In my work with individuals and couples who have experienced grievous sin, I have found that it's not sin that ends most relationships, because all relationships experience sin. Rather, it's a person's blindness and their refusal to acknowledge their sin and repent that makes reconciling and healing impossible. And confession of sin without making amends or restitution for the effects of that sin is like saying, I'm sorry I burned down your house by lighting careless matches, but don't expect me to pay for the rebuilding of it. And you may forgive someone, but the reconciliation of the relationship requires the sinner to demonstrate some genuine repentance and genuine change. Therefore, it's important that you know what that looks like. So share this with someone who you might think could benefit from it and leave your comments below. But remember, this is a public Facebook page. God bless.